So we discovered in the previous video, when we compared our answers using the trapezium rule to uh, the value that we were getting on our calculator, that sometimes the trapezium rule gives us a fairly good approximation, um, and in other cases, not so good. So uh, one of our answers in the previous video, uh, we're actually a couple of hundred out. Okay, And there's no, nothing wrong with our calculation using the trapezium rule. It's just that for that integral, it wasn't particularly good. So there are going to be, pro there are going to be situations where you're getting overestimates or underestimates. And for particular shaped curves, you need to know when you're getting what, okay? And uh, why you would be getting an overestimate in some cases or why an underestimate. Now, this can really be shown by homing, or like zooming in on uh, a section of a curve, okay? So if I was to look at a curve that was uh, convex at a p between two particular points, okay? If I exaggerate this a bit, so if I put in an x-axis, for example, and I try to draw a trapezium uh, between these two points, you can see that the trapezium would clearly go over the top of the curve. Okay, and so you would have an overestimate. The area of your trapezium would clearly be larger than the area you're trying to find between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, so this would be the same case if the curve looked like that, for very much the same reason, like so. Okay, however, if the curve is uh, concave, or um, uh, if you want concave down, okay. So if it looked like that, then if I draw trapezium like so, and join up those two points, you can see that clearly the area of the trapezium will be less than the area between the curve and the x-axis. And so this would be an underestimate. It'd be the same case if the curve was just going the other way. OK. So if, it, um, if a question asked um, whether your answer was an overestimate or an underestimate, then part of what you should be thinking about is what is the shape of the curve? Does the curve look like this or does the curve look like that? Okay, And if you're what asked to really draw a diagram to explain your reasoning, then draw something like this, something that accentuates the situation to show what the situation is like when the curve is convex or concave. OK, so um, that's what you need to consider. If the shape of the curve between the two points that you're considering has a change in being convex and concave, then it is then a little bit more challenging to figure out whether what you've got here is an overestimate or an underestimate in total. So some bits will be underestimates, other bits will be overestimates, okay? And without being able to calculate the exact area of the curve, it's going to be very difficult to determine. So you wouldn't be asked if you had this situation uh, whether your answer is an overestimate or underestimate, unless you were given the equation of the curve and you were able to plug it into your calculator to get a decimal answer, uh, a better numerical approximation okay, to the actual integral. So you may be asked it if, it was, if you were given the equation of the curve, if it was something you could integrate, 
then yes, you could check. If it's something you can't integrate, um, if the function was such that we cannot algebraically integrate, you could still use your calculator to check what the, uh, your calculator would give you for the integral between those two points. So then you would get an idea of whether you've got that overestimate or underestimate. But this is how you would show it uh, by diagram accentuating the situation.